Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Um, let's say hello to our guest this morning, a political affairs analyst, Mr. Tunde Kolawali. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my sister. How was your weekend? Fantastic. Thanks. Um, on the Daily oh, Trust newspaper, uh, on the Daily Trust newspaper, which we're starting with, the headline reads, How Police Extort Victims Before Tracking Kidnappers, Thieves. <laughs> And the writers read, we rely on private firms for tracking. Victims say they pay through the nose to track suspects. Experts say why it's difficult to track kidnappers and carjackers via GPS technology. And the police is asking to report airing officers involved to them. Row over airport concession deepens as NLC summons aviation unions. Forex, why CBN must consult with BDC operators, that's according to ABCON. Namani, sit-at-home order, IPOB inflicting more injuries on Igbo people. Terrorism sponsors, court fixes September 17 for arraignment of 400 suspects. Kaduna poll, APC, PDP protest as electoral body declares four local government's elections inconclusive. Unilag crisis festers as panel uncovers 3 billion naira tax fraud contract splitting aviation fg approves new handling rates 35 years after all right now to the daily independent big one there says banks may not fare well with e naira says analysts it says e naira could uh, threaten the ability of banks to collect fees from wire transfers uh, check issuances and other payment services how lack of consensus is delaying APC National Convention date. NDLEA intercepts 24.311 uh, kilograms of heroin and cocaine at Lagos Airport in Tin Can. Also, murder in Italy. Federal government demands probe into killing of Nigerian by estranged husband. My biggest challenge is what happens when I leave office, says Obaseki. And also, CJN orders disciplinary action against George over Saludo's criminal summon. At last, federal government approves new rates for ground handling companies. And also, Middle Belt Forum to federal government save Nigeria from another, another civil war, says invasion by Fulani militia assuming ethnic cleansing scale. And also, let's take a look at the top stories on the Punch newspaper this morning. It says, 14-month VAT sharing, five northern states, two southwest, two south-south, among top beneficiaries. Top 10, Lagos, Kanu, Oyo, Rivers, Kaduna, Katsina, Delta, Delta, Bauchi, Anambra, and Jigawa. And uh, Bonu says, not all southern states can generate enough revenues. That's the Bonu state government. And any LGE wants local governments to collect VAT. Idle and NPC refineries sell 463.63 million naira worth of electricity. COVID-19, seven states shop testing, stop testing, as infections hit 5,773 in 10 days. Lamido meets Obasanjo says nobody is safe. Strike continues, NARD insists after meeting NMA. Nigeria loses 20, actually 247.61 billion naira in 100 days of Twitter ban. Saludo's assets, CJN orders disciplinary action against FCT judge. Agencies, traders obstructing Lagos or Tabekuta Expressway project, says FG. Mother faints as Lagos sergeants kills 18-year-old admission sicker. Ogun rice smugglers kill customs officer. Agency probes attack. Lagos DPO's missing pistol. Police release lady. Remove officer over punch report. Ex-convict wears army uniform. Acts police to release suspect. Unilag visitation panel alleges contract splitting. Procurement acts violation. All right. And now on the Guardian newspapers. 100 days after Twitter ban. Uncertainty trails federal, federal government's plan. Worry over mass abductions as schools resume today. Over 1,000 children abducted between January and August 2021. And uh, 31 Bethel students still in captivity. Khan cries out. Federal government says lack of funds hampering implementation of safe school initiative. 
Mobile hunters, vigilance uh, groups, retired military and paramilitary officers to protect schools, says PTA chief. A few others on The Guardian. Name terrorism sponsors declare your name. MPF challenges federal government. A Unilag presidential visitation panel clears Babalaki on removal of VC. One other, federal government spends uh, 364 billion naira on petrol transportation. Uh, Mr. Kolawale, I, I want us to start with this one on The Guardian that says, uh, name terrorism sponsors to clear your names and um, MBF challenges federal government. Uh, let's start with your thoughts on that one and the seeming delay of the federal government to name uh, those who have been found to be sponsoring terrorism in Nigeria. Hello? Yes, uh, Mr. Kolawale, can you hear us? Yes. You're asking me to, uh, to comment on uh, the story with regards to the sponsors of terrorism. Yes. Well, uh, that's been uh, a running story. You will recollect that uh, not too long ago, certain persons who are, I think, uh, arrested in Dubai or thereabouts, prosecuted and uh, convicted for remitting money to the Boko Haram and then the bandits that we do have in Nigeria and here. Those people, I believe, are uh, presently in jail in Dubai. Here at home, what was expected of us is to also go after those whose names were mentioned uh, when some of these, uh, when the Dubai authorities were prosecuted the sponsors of Boko Haram that are based on their territory. But you will recollect that what the Attorney General of the Federation, the first reaction was to say, look, we are going to examine, we will study the judgment, the decision of the Dubai court, and ascertain whether there has been fair trial. That was the first reaction. He didn't say we are going to go after the local sponsors of Boko Haram, Whose stories have been, whose names have been mentioned in Dubai? So, to that effect, you could say that the attitude of the Nigerian authorities to so prosecuting those whose names have been mentioned with the sponsors of Boko Haram has been lukewarm. And that kind of uh, fuels the accusation that the authorities know the people behind this uh, insurgency and are merely uh, shielding them. And if you are shielding terrorists, division fundamentalists and all that, you can be sure that you are undermining the foundation of the Nigerian state. It is not impossible, I mark my word, that what is happening in Afghanistan today, what is happening in Pakistan, what has happened in Iran, in Iraq, in Syria, will most likely happen in Nigeria if we don't have the right attitude or if the authority don't have the political will to go after those who are sponsoring uh, this, uh, the Boko Haram and then the pandemic. Because most times, if it's not the army alone that wins any war, political decisions will even be more important in winning the war. The Nigerian army has been deciding their responsibilities but the political authorities have never had the guts and the balls to do what is needful, to do the right thing with regard to the fight against this Islamic fundamentalists that we are trying to destroy the Nigerian nation. All right, Mr. Kolawale, I want us to take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper. There's an exclusive story there, and it's about um, what exactly victims of you know kidnap and their families have to go through to regain freedom. And it says that... Um, I'm talking about a story on the Daily Trust newspaper here that exposes how police extort victims before tracking kidnappers and thieves. And the story explains to us that, you know, people whose family members were kidnapped have to pay as much as 50,000 naira to 100,000 naira to police operatives to track down um, where their family members are. You know, the police was, you know, presented with this finding and they basically said, oh, nothing like that happens and that, you know, you should report any erring officer. 
But we know that, you know, these official statements are a far cry from what really happens on ground. So what really are your comments regarding this? That Nigerians have to actually pay the police to find their family members and actually essentially do their job, which is, you know, trying to safeguard Nigerians, their lives and property. Well, uh, the truth is bitter. But you see, it is a righteousness that respects a nation. Anybody who has had cause to deal with the Nigerian police will know that the allegations that they take money before they track these bandits, it's uh, the basic truth. I am a lawyer and I've been in this business for some decades now. And I interact with the police on a regular basis. I have had cost myself personally to ask the police to help me track certain persons who were using their telephone line to harass me. And when I approached the police and know that no I'm beyond, I was asked to go and bring certain amount of money before they'll be able to uh, begin to do uh, any tracking. I have also had car clients on whose behalf we approach the Nigerian police to help us track certain lives and monitor certain people who were kind of harassing, intimidating, and following our clients. And we have always been asked to bring certain amount of money before they do the job. Mm. Also, look at the accusations coming from the Southeast in which people that uh, in such a general police have arrested their, their relations and war at you. Look at the demand the police are said to be making from those uh, people. Sometimes they even ask you to go and bring millions of naira before they do their regular job. In my own case, I was asked to go and make 500,000 naira before they would help me to track uh, those who were harassing me. Wow. So, uh, look, let's uh, be honest with ourselves. That's why I say, the police authorities, the higher authorities themselves are cooperating with some of these things. If they are not sharing out of the money that their full soldiers ask for, why would they now deny that the whole thing don't happen? Furthermore, do you think it is possible for somebody like Abaki Ali to have been doing what he is and led to have, been, to have done over the years? without the authorities uh, knowing about it. In some other countries of the world, integrity tests is usually done for the security people, for the police especially. In a place like uh, Britain and Nora, the police authority will deliberately go and put money in certain apartments and Nora and ask a policeman, a group of policemen to go and do a search in those houses. The money would have been marked. And then when they come back, they will expect them to bring an inventory of what they found there. If when they come back, they didn't disclose that they met the money that the authorities have put down in there, then they, 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 the policemen will be queried, and then they are dismissed from the force. They have failed the integrity test. Why is it that here in Nigeria, we don't conduct integrity tests for the Nigerian police uh, officers and men to the rank and file? Before now and since then, we are always told that bail is free. But can you go to any Nigerian police station and secure people's bail without paying for a little of this, this moment I'm talking to you? The answer is no. All right, Mr. Kalawale. The tragedy I... of the whole thing is that uh, yes, um, just most of the top echelon of the Nigerian police today, they are lawyers. Mm. So why are they still behaving this way? Okay. It is Mr. Kalawale, in, in that same breath, talking about um, corruption, I, I want you to still talk about the story that we're seeing across the papers. And on the Daily Trust, it reads, Unilag crisis festers as panel uncovers three billion naira tax fraud and contract splitting. Um, we know that in March earlier this year, um, there was a committee that the presidency um, put together, and that's to um, basically investigate um, allegations of fraud in the University of Lagos from 2016 to 2020. And um, they've you know, carried out the investigation. They've submitted their panel report saying that there's actually been fraud in the University of Lagos um, between 2016 to 2020, contract splitting and all of that. Um, what do you expect the presidency to do or acts on regarding this report? 
Well, I am not too sure the presidency will have the political will to do what is uh, right. In my humble opinion, the way I manage the crisis in the Unilaw was handled is very, 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 very sharp, sharp. That is not the way that kind of conflict ought to have been handled. Mr. Babalaki's uh, chancellorship was dismissed on the ground that he didn't carry the presidency along before he signed the vice chancellor of the University of Lagos. Is that the substance of the issue? Mm. The substance of the issue is that the VC wasn't managing the affairs of the University of Lagos the way it should be managed. There's still, you know, a few more stories. Uh, one of them, I believe, that, you know, which is a huge concern, you know, across the country is the story on the uh, Daily Independent, I believe, that, uh, you know, allays fears as schools return. And that is with regards to um, uh, the fear of uh, kidnapping, you know, once again. You know, it's something that I believe that we spoke about last week and, you know, asked, yes, you know, the Kaduna State Government may have set up a new, um, you know, timetable, you know, you know, uh, you know and of course, uh, excluded third term uh, from uh, the schools. Mm -hmm. But what exactly, you know, is the security situation in those states? You know, you can't be sending kids back to school when you, are, you haven't been able to assure parents and assure these students that they are completely safe. And so those are some of the things that are important that, you know, that have also come up in the news this morning. And we hope... Um, According to reports, it says from January to August or so, about a thousand uh, children were kidnapped in Nigeria just in 2021, which is shocking. The Bethel uh, Baptist School still has 31 children in captivity. Um, that doesn't even make the news anymore. Doesn't even make headlines. Nobody really even is talking about this. There's still 31 Nigerians, you know, being held by kidnappers, and so these are things that I believe. Um, would be or, or should make great conversations or, or important conversations across state houses, houses of assembly and of course national assembly across the whole country um, as we uh, keep it going. Yes, indeed. Um, thank you very much for staying um, tuned. It's been Off the Press on the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break here and return um, with Today in History. <laughs>